Hi guys, today we're back for another video. We're going to review Charlie Carell at 100NL GG Poker. We are not here, yeah, just a little disclaimer, I'm not here to say if Charlie Carell is bad, if Charlie Carell is good. I think Charlie Carell is a good player and uh, he showed a lot of results in, in the past year. So yeah, just to say I'm, I'm not here to, to judge or anything. I will just judge, but uh, judge only the decision. It's important not to be biased because the player is not... Um, we can't judge a player on only one session. So let's get into the action directly. Uh, we have a nice, interesting end. Um, so he called preferably with King Queen off. I think there are a lot of things to say about this first. Um, the reason why he called the King Queen is because he thinks that he has an edge that compensates the EV loss that you have in theory here. Um, which in a lot of spots, I agree, but the problem in these spots is. We have to think about um, a concept that I call IDEV. Um, in English, this will be more like TV, I would say. It's um, the evolution on how the EV are distributed, okay? And here, what is it? It's when you have a spot like this with King Queen, and you want to call because you think you have an edge, uh, the EV change, okay? And the EV evolve with the statements you're doing. So directly, King Queen off is a fall, and calling doesn't make any money, okay? But if you think you have uh, edge, it might make money, okay? So the EV is going to evolve. Um, so that's the E of the EDAV. But the, the the second layer is the D, is the distribution. Because here you actually have many moves. You can call, you can fall, you can raise. And given the assumption, the EV will change, okay? The EV will fall is zero, of course. But um, I mean zero, I mean, minus 0.5 because you fall on a small bind. But here in these spots, the EV of the race is also going to evolve. So if you do statements that you actually have EV when you call here, then the race also makes money. And I don't see a situation, so it's tough to visualize, but you have the call, you have the race, okay? At first you have the GTO statement, maybe second is you have like the statement that the player is tight, maybe you have the statement that the player is tight and you have an edge. And for all the statements, the EV are going to change, okay? And evolve. And I don't see any, um, I don't see any spots where like calling makes more money than raise. And I think if you want to exploit pool imbalances and pool weakness, you can do it also by free betting preflop. And I think it's actually higher EV, especially because people are not for betting small buying against hijack that much. So I would have free bet. And I'm not saying the call is bad. I mean, I think it's losing, especially with the rake. It's just awesome on GG. But um, I, I think like there's uh, the, the, the raise, uh, the free bet makes more money, I think, um, given the assumption we make. Um, so the two EV evolve, but I don't see one single spot where calling is really um, better EVs than the raise uh, preflop here. So maybe extremely rare, but it might happen. So um, King Queen here, we check um, preflop, which is uh, chair from the flop, which is fine. We decided to mean raise. Um, that's kind of the same thing I said before. Is I think if you want to play this as a mean raise and bets. You have lines that are better. I don't think this line is bad. I just think that you have a lines that are actually better if you have King Queen, you can do a lot of other things. You can call, you can raise bigger, and yeah, you can call, bet the river if he checks. You can maybe call, raise the turn. I think you have many lines that are better than this one. I'm not saying that calling and raising the turn is better. I'm just saying that I think playing the standard way here and calling is probably the better EV option. Because I think the pool imbalances uh, in the um, bet check and facing bet line is way too high. I think they fall way too much. And if they fall way too much, it creates the EV in the calling line, which means that I don't think the mean raising line will be higher than the calling line. So I will always call. Um, so I don't mind the line, but I, I think it is just about optimal here compared to other lines. So we're staying here, we call on a small line. That, that's kind of the same thing. I think A10 is always better as a free bet compared to call. And uh, given the rake on GG, I don't think I should call uh, A10 here. And I think A10 uh, as a call is probably losing, even, even with an incredible edge. Uh, it's really winning. Like if you play 10 and L with like a mid I6 level, maybe you can call this type of end. But again, I will not call them because I think free bet makes more money. Um, anyway, uh, and we bet one down the turn. I don't mind. I think checking is better, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. Um, okay, so here, excuse me, my camera is... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to put the camera here. 
Um, yeah, just about uh, a bit about the east and end. Um, I think on a turn here, uh, you don't really need to do that with a stand. I think it's better to check. And when the guy check, I actually expect to have full value, but I expect too many like ace jack, ace queen generals that were over from the rate towards the a6 region, overweight, excuse me. Um, because like most players did the cherry back region and of a free player is only a6, and I don't expect no players to have like seven, eight, for example. So what you can do with a stand is check. And when he check again, you can just overbet even with a stand. It sounds really dumb, but like most players will just not adapt and they have way too much as jack is king. And I think you have better EV to overbet the river compared to check, even if you might win sometimes at showdown. So I, I would have checked here. If you bet, I raise. And if you check, I just like quick spot river and just say him good luck. Um, and, and you can do it over and over. Like, of course, when you do some explode, that sometimes can be a bit difficult because people might adapt. But like, you can just do it all the time. And as soon as somebody adapts, like you just tag him and you just don't play like this against him. And this will, strategy. this will be the strategy I will use. So, um, six is here. Um, so, Charlie said that uh, he preferred to see bet without the hurt. Um, and this ends uh, prefer to check because you can call the hurt turn. I think it's a mistake. I think it's the opposite. Um, typically, I'm sure it's the opposite because when you have sixes with hurt and you bet, uh, you have two clean outs uh, and you have more equity in the betting line. Because when there is uh, two hurts, then you have a flush. And when there is six, as I said, um, and you bet on the flop, there is more money when you can actually touch two clean outs compared to when you have sixes, like with the spade and, and the clubs, and one out is just not clean uh, because the villains will have a lot of flushes in the checkling line. Um, so I think typically it's not um, it's not um, it's a mistake, okay, to to uh, to have this reason, but maybe in practice that might be the opposite. There is a concept called EV realization. Uh, that you might already hear if you follow Finding Equilibrium channel, YouTube channel, you can subscribe, by the way. And um, here in this type of spots, um, maybe as a human, we play better 60 with hurt as a check because it's easier to play. And sometimes what you um, might notice is some ends are easier to play in some lines. So like the EV realization, like the percentage of the EV you can realize by, of the solver uh, of a specific EV might be higher as a human. So maybe six is better to, to play as a bet, but maybe it's better to play as a check as a human. I don't think so, but I'm just saying that um, it's important also not to only focus on the EV of the solver and say, okay, six is, a, is always a check. I mean, six is with a hurt is always a bet. And it's important to be open and understanding uh, really um, where does the EV come from and how does it come from? So, yeah, I would, I would have bet with sixes uh, with a spade. And in Southport here, I would, I would have call also. One thing about raising, but I think calling is better. And um, we called really, really fast. I'm going to talk about um, the, the timing also at, at the end. Um, well, that's, that's really not that easy, I think. Um, Villains probably have like ace four, ace six. Uh, I mean, ace four is use as a bluff, mainly six seven. I don't think the blocker is important in this spot because most players will just over bluff or like under bluff. So I don't think this the blockers compensate the um, theoretical difference in EV, um from uh, the villains here. So I think it's not that easy, but he shouldn't have that many ace of hurt N, and it's actually pretty natural here to bluff on the six seven ace for region. Honestly, I would have fall against the pool because I think in one hundred now I just don't bluff enough. I, I would not fold this type of things on, on Irish text, but to be honest, I would have fall. I don't I don't think he has enough combo like this, I, and I think it's main it's too much the ace of hurt here. So um, yeah, G, but uh, I, I would have fall honestly. Um, Jack then here, we decided to check on Jack 6-5. So typically it's a board where you should have some check and bet one third, will you maybe have fought sometimes. The reason why is because Jack 6 juice is not Jack 6-5. Jack 6-5 is way more, uh, it's way better for big line. I mean, I'm not saying that big line is never done this board, but the ball will evolve in a way that is often better for big line compared to button, um, compared to other boards. Uh, there are a lot of turns where you're going to bet, it's going to be a seven, a four, which are a really bad card for you. Um, so you want to be a bit more careful on this type of board because 
there are like less opportunities to put a lot of money on free streets. Um, so Jack, then I'm, I'm fine with check. Um, I guess the pool we can just want for range because the amount of call will not be high enough with like the border region, King Nine suited this type of hand, and I don't expect them to raise enough. So um, I think it's slightly under check raise. So in this spot, I think you make more money with Jack Ten in the betting line, and on the turn. Um, okay, turn is really interesting because the pool is overfalling against turn delay. And when I say the pool, it's the pool. <laughs> so you're in play 200, 2 NL, they overfall against delay. You play 1K NL, they overfall against delay. But maybe not 5K NL. But like, this is really one of the only spotting spoker where like every humans just play it um, not well here. Uh, I think the main region that player miss here against the one for delay is probably the uh, a seven estate is nine region should be defense sometimes in several spots, and most player will not. Uh, there are also always ends, but yeah, basically, I don't expect king queen or like lower a6 to call. So we have a good bluff delay, but which is not which doesn't really mean we have a good uh delay in value. I, I will still value it, I will still try to value bet here because I don't expect people to bluff me that much when I check the turn, and I think here it's really cool to uh deny some overcards. So I will really bet here with Jack 10 on the turn. I don't know my chicken, uh, but I think betting is, is higher EV. And on the river, it sounds weird, but I think most players that check here actually don't have an ace or don't have a flash. Why? Because when you see snap check on the river, like really snap check, there are like two groups of people mainly. There are people that don't care and just play um only the weaker region like this because when they have a flush or set or nays they will think about it okay so there is this region and there is the region that trapped the river but it's there is a high chance the re the people that trap the river with like snap snap check also have the air region so you actually play against um like two sub group of the population with one group having um some trap and air and weaker and count value bet. And we go that always have the, the weaker region here. And I think um, the, the group that always have the weaker region in the trap uh, is actually overweighted compared to the other group. So if you see, if we see the uh, overall population, I think um, uh, we have way too much people with only weak ends. And what this means is I think we can actually value bet because I think Queen Jack, King Jack will often bet. I don't think a lot of people have an ace here in this spot, as I said, and we just have the best time. Um, but the second problem is we need to get call, and there are a lot, a lot of flushes uh, that we might have. Are, we are kind of a six, so it's going to be to get tough to get called by sevens, eight. So it's probably a spot where really rare. I think I'm close always ahead, but I can't really value that unfortunately, um, because I think he will fall like really, really a lot. It's so probably one of the only spots like this where I'm not going to value bet soon, but otherwise I will just value bet. And so I think I will do only one blind. So if you're like a pure addict, uh, you will see that uh, a lot in a lot of spots, it's just not good and you can do this uh, theoretically. But in practice here, uh, if you know the range and you put not enough blood phrases, you will see that you always bet the sizing. And I don't expect a guy to snap check the river uh, here to just bluff my, my 1B blind uh, bet. I, I think I would have check, um, even if it's close. Okay, so we have a screen here uh, with flats. Um, I have two problems with, with this flat here with Queen. Sure, I think it's higher EV to free bet, but even if it's not, and it's like really close, uh, the problem is like it's super easy for people to adapt to the strategy, especially on DG, because they will see that you have a high gap between VPAP and, and PFR. And uh, and also that you have like a lower free bet re region. And I think it's really, really easy to, ad to adapt, to counter adapt. So as you see, sometimes I like to play really hard explore because I don't think enough pl players adapt or you can play hard explore and just, um, I just tag the guy when, when he, he saw you uh, doing a red move. Uh, but here it's, it's actually, I think too easy to counter exploit. So I, I would just free bet. And I also expect free bets to be higher EV. Uh, for a lot of reason, I don't think they're for bad enough as deep and and just post up. You, you can just have a lot of full equity on flop and turns. Um, yeah, so um, flop we check, um, check is completely fine. Um, we decided to uh, on the flop, actually, you can do something funny, you, you can bet one blind. The reason why is because, like, when 
when this guy calls, this guy calls or caps. So it's really easy to put pressure on the range. And second is a lot of players who are just going to raise like queens, kings, aces region. And you can put a lot of pressure uh, against this range uh, as deep. Um, the only problem is he can have like jack x of diamond, but it's probably like one or even two combos. So I'm not going to be worried about it too much. But I think you can put maybe a bit more pressure by betting one blind, let them race, let them call the weaker region. But anyway, I mean, check is fine. Just just an idea here. Uh, the better turn. So the main range here is this king, uh, king 10. I, I can even expect him to fall uh, ace king on the turn. Believe me, the pool is really tight. So um, I think we need to capitalize on king 10, which is probably the hand that is the most weighted in his range. So I will have raise um, here. Another raise really big. Uh, let's maximize against two pairs. So uh, yeah, so Cherry Carol recognized well that the main uh, region here is to pair. Uh, I think Jack 10 is always betting on the flop. Uh, King Jack is often betting on the flop. So yeah, the main range is King 10, but people are not falling to pair, uh, man. So I think you can raise 25. Um, that's, that's a cool trick also uh, for, for you to, to know. Uh, people never fall to pair when they think you can have two pair that are like worse than them. So here with King 10, if he thinks you can, you can have Jack 10, uh, he will absolutely never fall on the turn. So I just want to increase my sizing because I win more money. And I really don't expect no fall. And maybe the sizing is a, maybe a bit better because you can get more call by the Ace King region. Um, I think we need to capitalize on King 10 because Ace King will fall on the river anyway. Um, because like nobody's bluffing these spots. Uh, and I think <laughs> you're right if you're not bluffing that much. Because the problem is it's actually... Um, it's actually his queen, king, ten mostly. So why, why bluffing against this range? People don't really like to fold um, the two pair region. I, I saw Charlie Carroll um, in the comments section saying that um, he don't wants to. He doesn't want to make fold the top five percent of villain's range. And I think it, usually it's true, probably most of the time. I, I would just not try to make fold um, two pairs here. And the sizing is, I think, slightly too big, but should be okay. Um, King Queen here, we have a really, really nice trick. Um, I, I saw the video already once. I really like the free bet sizing by Charlie Carroll. I know why he's doing it. I can't believe, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, this is super smart, actually, because when you free bet eight and the guy doesn't know you, he can just think you're a fish. And against a fish, you are not for betting this type of spots. Uh, and believe me, if you are doing it, just stop <laughs> because a Rex player in general. Uh, just not free, or not free betting enough in these spots. So what Charlie Cowell is doing is he's acting like a rec, uh, recreational player, uh, just to um, just to um, force the players uh, to under four bet, which uh, I think is, is something I do, and I think it's something really smart. He's a bet one fair in the flop. Um, this is probably a board where you should, in theory, of course, um, uh, have a mixed strategy, but. In, in practice here, it's something I say a lot if you see my videos. Uh, often I just uh, range bet here and even at higher stakes because the strategy is just not going to well and it's easy to execute. So probably one, I like to have complex strategy often, but it's probably one of the only spots, even at 5 KNL, where I would just one third. Um, yeah, because strategy is not counter well and, and you don't lose that much EV. And uh, King Queen. Um, Villain decided to lead Watford and Charlie Carroll race. I think it's okay, but I would say the same thing as I said at the beginning of the video. I think of King Queen, if you think that raising 42 is good, you have better lines. Because if you think raising 42 is good, because you think that Villain doesn't have a good hand and he might fall against 42, but which ends? I'm gonna ask you a question. Which, which ends? Uh, fold against 42 and are calling against a call by you and a bet when they check. No ends. So you probably have better incentives to call because there are a lot of river that you can bluff. He will tell you his ends as is the sizing he choose. So here you just don't fall. You don't just don't lose 42 blinds when she has nine. And if he wants to bluff the river again, um, you can just let let him bluffs and, and just raise if you're really sure that the, the raising on turn is good. So I don't mind raising on turn. Okay, I think it's a bad move, but I think you have a clear call and bet here. This is going to be super profitable. You can bluff 
uh, a ten, you can bluff a jack, you can even bluff flush combos if you check. Um, you can have the best end on a king and a queen and value bet small. Um, so I think you have way more benefits in the coin line here. And if you assume that the range is really bad, I think uh, 42 is probably the third option to do because min raise will actually be better because um, you make fold the region also when you um, raise uh, min raise and you can also capitalize on, on a weaker call that might fold the river when you min raise and bet. And when you mean raise also, what is great is you, just, you don't lose that much against the nine when he decides to re-raise you. Um, and you, you let him re-raise you, so the range, uh, his range will be more capped. And he fold, okay. And his queen, I think he called with king 10. King of diamond 10 of clubs, if I remember correctly. And bottom left, we have a seven. We're going to see it directly and not at all. Okay, this was 10 of speed. Anyway, so we have a seven, uh, UGG against small blind. Um, I think this call is losing a lot directly. So now the question is um, can the call win in practice? In practice? In practice? In practice? No. Okay, okay, whatever. Uh, the, the question here is uh, is uh, a seven suited might win against the pool? Uh, if the answer is yes, we are calling. If the answer is no, we are, we are falling. Um, I think the, the EV in theory is really bad here with this end, so I don't think we compensate in practice. I think if I play like 300, 400 dips, maybe, because you can, you can literally bluff all the time if they are tight. Um, but here, I think the, the free beating region, uh, super balance against hijack, is probably a bit too tight compared to theory, so... I think I would just fall a seven. I don't think playing 200 dips here against the tight range just just uh, compensate the EV loss here. So I would have fold. Okay. And decided to bet uh, one third. Um, we saw that Charlie Carroll hesitated to raise. I think calling is better. Um, the region that you are generates fall from are actually going to check the turn and fall the turn. So I probably prefer to call. He can still bluff King Queen. We play a lot of fouls. We're playing deep. So yeah, just to call here. Uh villains check pretty fast. And Charlie Carroll decided to check back, which I we didn't like. The main reason why I don't like is because when people want for check, I don't think they would bluff that much his queen. I don't even think they have his jack off at his positions. So he has what queen jack? Chuck 10, that's six combos. I don't think players are bluffing the river that much. And I don't think when you check the turn and you raise the rivers, are actually even calling these king aces because if they think about it, you really don't have that many bluffs. So a lot of spots where I really like to check my flushes, I say flushes because players put you on a skin with this hurt, not calling your raise on the river. But I don't think it's the type of spots. And I think here the main region he has is queens, jacks, ace king, aces. I think um, uh, ace king might uh, call if you bet big aces also. Uh, queens with a hurt also, jacks with a hurt also. So I would have bet two thirds here. And I think this is the ISTV move. And when you bet two thirds, the pot is going to be probably like 80 or something like this on the river. And if you think people overfall in this spot, just bet 20. <laughs> just bet 20 and they will just not fall this king aces region. I will probably bet like 30 uh, because when I bet like 20 blinds and 30 blinds, I just took 50 blinds uh, on most runouts. And here when you check, I just don't see how you win 50 blinds. Um, so yeah, I would have uh, always bet here with seven. I think it's a, it's a mistake. On the river, again, deciding, he decided to call. Um, to, first, is, this was played too fast, but I'm going to talk about it a bit more on, on the the video um, because a lot of things to a lot of interesting things to say about this. And on the river, he said that um, uh, sizing his um, boat flushes. I mean, you beat the flushes and, and quads. I don't believe. It. I think in general, when people have quads, so let's say he has five and eights in general, they want to generate raise and they're a bit smaller. So I don't really think they have quads in this size. But he can still have kings. Uh, that's defi definitely something to take into consideration. And now we have to think, okay, if you ask kings, uh, which combos are we evaluating now? Um, we check the turn. He might easily have aces in the size, which 
I think will not happen that much. I usually they tend to bet alpha two third, but I mean second pot sometimes aces. So I think that Sep probably doesn't doesn't have enough full outs here. Uh, I, I can't even expect um, lower setting with kings, but that's that's really close, honestly, because even aces might fall against the race. So I don't mind calling. Um, I would have just take more time, but I don't mind. And uh, villain has uh, aces. Okay, so king nine here. We open on the cutoff. We blind call. The board is jack ten five, so it's a board where you should, in theory, play big or check mainly. And against the pool, one for range is completely fine if you play lowers and 200 nl and 200 nl also. And on the turn, he did freak spots, which is actually good sizing. Uh, it's a board is pretty dynamic where you want to put as much money as you can when you have overpairs and you need to have bluffs. And king nine is a fine. I will think that king nine is played more in the checking line compared to the bet here, but this should be okay. This sizing is okay. You, you can you can play this type of sizing, and and most players overfall to to this type of size. You need to call some like five x six x, which I don't think here will happen that much. But uh, yeah, so we have five four here. We decided to free bet, which I really like. Uh, I think that inter rates probably EV zero, and with this rate probably less EV. But the fact you are playing really deep, I think compensate the theoretical EV, and I think against the pool actually you win a lot of money with five four, uh, because most uh, players just don't have the balls to fall bet love that much. And even if they're four bets, so you can just call three hundred deeps and you can love a lot of runouts. Uh, so he checked the flop, uh, which again I don't like. Uh, I think betting is betting is just royal here. I just you can bet one for range. You can even bet twenty percent range. Um, you have so much for liquidity, and also when you bet and the guy is calling, because nobody leads the turn, it's just a royal path to just see any river and, for, and avoid spots like this where you have 5 4. Uh, good end of the flop, but the guy now is betting on a turn. You need to call 5 five sped eye and on the queen. Um, I, I really like the sizing. I think you should have small here. You, you, you have like so, I mean, you don't have that many bluffs. That's that's not why I want to bet one quarter. Okay, it's just the reason is you have so uh, not that many bluff in the Percy region that I just don't expect enough call. Even if you bet six, uh, like if he thinks about it, like you always have an ace here, which you even shouldn't have like a five four. Um, anyway, okay, uh, okay. So we see the ace eight off. Let's see. Okay. Blind against blind. Uh, okay, open pre check the flop. Um, and we raise on the turn 35. Ooh, that's big. Um, also, lines are better for me. Um, so, you have probably like five or six options here. You have fall, which I don't think is an option. Uh, call, okay. You have race on the turn, like 10. You have race really big, like 20. You have race 35. And you also have call lead here in these spots if you want to bluff. I think usually check and one blind from a guy that is non uh with with like non mass max stacks is often a play from a recreational players. And I think usually these are really weak in this line. I don't expect enough fives to play this way. But again, if you know what you have the best stand, like if you know that he's going to fall against 35. He can let him call against like erase five and just boom, and just bluff the river for like freak spot. I think you have better lines. Like I prefer to take uh, five more blinds to the weaker region here uh, and just bluff him on the on the turn. So I don't mind this move. I think it's a great idea. But I think you have like way more of the move that are better. And even in race like probably like eighteen is probably the same. You probably have the same result. So yeah, I would have race smaller here and uh, probably like race smaller. And you also let him erase the five x region. That's why he's great, and uh, and you can have also a lot of information on his timing too. So I, I would have raised a uh, way smaller. Here. Okay, and then fold. Uh, yeah, I think it's the end. I uh, I uh, like the less. Let's see it. So um, um, small and bit out pot on Jack six four, and it should be actually really close on the flop. The problem with nine eight is even if you play a lot of backdoors, you can play an eight or a nine. Usually, when people play half pot on this flop, it's often stronger. So uh, against uh, one third, I think you can do some move. But against half pot, I, I would just fall here exploratively. I think it's just not good to call. And on the turn here, 
this end is just a fall. Uh, you have nine I, you block the bluffs. So theoretically, the EV is probably, uh, I mean, the EV, the EV of the fall is zero, but uh, the EV of the call should be really bad here. And Trey Carrill decided to main raise, and it's a move I don't, I really don't like. Why? Because in theory, um, the EV is bad. Okay, when you call this spot, the DV is, I mean, when you call or raise these spots, DV directly is just low because you don't block the value region and you block plus. Um, the problem in this type of spots is now in part T in, against the pool, uh, you need to compensate this. Um, so you need to do this line and having correct assumptions that um, change the theoretical EV and, uh, and make it profitable. But I don't think it happens. Um, I think here, I don't see why we can raise against the half pot three quarter here. So I would have fold. And I'm going to say the same thing I said before is, again, if you want to play this type of line, I think calling is better. I'm not saying that you need to call with 98 here, okay? I'm just saying that for me, calling is better because um, you're actually going to let him uh, bet with the ace 10 Squeenish King region. And we might expect most players to fall against the raise on the turn on the river. And if you want to, uh, when you call, you let him also bluff on the turn. So if you think that you can compensate the um, the minus EV call uh, on the turn by having a lot of full equity on the river raise, I don't mind calling. But if it's great, okay, if the, the EV of the call. Uh, is higher given the assumption we said. I don't think min raise is better. So again, if you want to do move from its only call, I, I would not call any spots because I'm not sure about um, how he plays and if the assumptions are great. Um, but yeah, I, I would have fallen if we want to do move. I think we prefer to call any spots um, and just capitalize the folding equity we have against the river race. Okay, so let's see pocket nines. Uh, we call, um, most coaches will tell you to never call small lines with this big line. Um, not most coach. Well, I mean the most coach. <laughs> I think you, you win more money with nines. So, so one thing you can, um, to, to prove that point is uh, you need to see uh, like a players play like 1 million ends that flats on small line a lot. And you want to see his results compared to a guy that free bet. But we have a lot of bias because in general, people are flat in the small line. Again, in general, our weaker players and they will have um, a win rate that is lower because of weaker players. So it's actually not that really possible to compare the EV. Um, but yeah, I'm just telling you that even if I'm not sure, I think there is a huge chance that free bet is way higher in terms of EV compared to the call, especially in a pool where even in position, I really think they're like not for bad enough. And against the jam, I think no, it's just a call now. I expect too much from the men, so I'm fine. Okay, a stand off recall on the small line. So here in these spots, I think calling is better. Um, so you might say, what the fuck? <laughs> well, why are you saying the opposite now? It's because uh, with the wreck in the big line, I think a stand off against two weeks. So first you open two weeks. Well, we have higher EV to call because we have less to add when, you, when we call. And there is the big one pair. This is a wreck uh, with high EV PAP. So in general, in this situation, I like to let the wreck players come into the pot. So it's probably one of the only exception where I think yes, you can call this one line here. Um, okay. Big line call. Um, big line snap down pots here. Button fold. Okay. And here we decided to call. Uh, thank you very much, correctly. So I don't like the call for, um, it's only for one reason. There's a concept I call EV distribution, uh, which I can't really explain now because it's really long. And it's probably one of my secrets, so I don't really want to say it completely too much. But uh, okay, let's let's think in terms of scenarios here. First scenarios, uh, I, I will say there are three scenarios. Okay, first scenarios, the guy just always check when he has sixes and a five, and he bets only random end. Like he has seven deuce of hearts, he bets. He has king ten, he bets. Okay. Again, this player, the EV we have. Is probably like he bet six. Let's let's say we win six. Okay, that's not gonna be this, but just to prove my point. 
So we, we will average six with bind because he has uh, nothing. Sometimes he will hit, sometimes he will bluff us, but he has only weaker ends, okay? First scenario, we win six with bind, okay? Now, second scenarios, um, he has draws when he plays this way. So if you have spade combos, you have seven, eight, and he has five X sometimes, okay? Again, this guy, if he wants to call, because we think it's um, plus EV, okay? But EV we are going to win is not that big, okay? They're going to be slightly better. Gonna win to be slightly like maybe zero one, zero two big blinds, something like this. Okay, so first scenario we win six, second scenario we win 0 0.2. And first scenario, okay, he only have a five. And in this scenario, we lose six. Okay. And the problem in this type of spots is the population, even with this VPAP of players that pot with a five, is way, way, way more present that players are just pot king jack of spade and not a five. So you see the three scenarios. One, when you win, slight, you win a slight amount, and one, you are losing a lot, and one, you are winning a lot. But for me, the scenario where you're winning a lot is not happening that much, okay? So now the main two scenarios are he has draws and a five, and sometimes maybe wrong on ends, and you win a tiny amount. And the other scenario, he has a five. So you lose six big blind, okay, at least. I mean, sometimes you can bluff him on somewhere now, but Let's say you lose six. So there is one scenario when you win 0 0.2 and one you lose six. You can call because you need to be like uh, 30 times more on the first scenario if we expect uh, the wins to be 0 0.2 big blinds compared to the other scenarios, okay? And that's never going to happen uh, because the weight of the scenarios are like never like 30 times that you had and, and one time way behind. So it's uh, in your more way behind. So you just can't call in spots because it just doesn't make money. Uh, given the scenario. So this is called the distribution. And now the distribution of the spots will be slightly red, way behind. So uh, I think the ponderation, the weights of the way ahead scenarios is not happening that much in the spots. So I would say it doesn't exist. And it's mainly uh, here in the spots, slightly red, way behind. So you can call. Um, so yeah, there are a lot, a lot of um, uh, EV distribution. Um, you have like Sawa, you have way ahead, slightly red, way behind. You have uh, bluffing distribution. You have uh, even timing distribution. You got a lot of things like this. But again, it's required probably a three hour video because it's really long concept. But just what I want to say is here in these spots, I'm not analyzing them like uh, straightly, like he can have this, he can have that. I'm more going to wait scenarios, try to create distribution because now when you create distribution, decision is super easy because I don't have to think about his range. I need to think about distribution. So if I know that I'm slightly red, so the max I can win is probably like 0 0.2 and the big loss I can have is six bind. I'm just falling because I know in this, in this type of scenarios, it's a fall um, because the weights um, can't make it profitable. So what I now I play in these spots, I try to recognize the EV. And again, so you have some EV distribution when you need to always call. I'm going to enter into detail that much. But yeah, you, you have my fault on these spots. So here's how I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. And, uh, and here I, I, I fold. Um, it's always something when I share this because it's probably one of my secrets. I, I took a lot of time to... to, to Think about this and also uh, make it on the paper. But um, uh, and now we are bluffing. It's not fine, but it's probably one of the only scenario where um, we um, might have a bluff. <laughs> I think now you, you can't really jump here. Um, I think you can just like thirty-five and it's probably the the same result. And now we just try to make fall the five. And in general, like free tips. There's also a concept. That's probably that. <laughs> that's the last concept. I don't want to to be tired. But there's a concept that call uh, I call MPR rules. I'm um, MP rules. It's like matching profile rules. Is um you can uh, this one is really complex. So you weight the um, the ends of the line range depending on the profile by linking to action. So here in this spot, he checked the turn. Okay. So what you're going to do is we're going to visualize how profiles that check the turn are reacting to a river bed. But um, by using a Bayesian thinking, if they check the turn, okay, considering they check the turn, the probabilities are that they were scared of the flush on the turn is high. So you have more fold equity against the profile, profiles that check the turn. So the combos in the folding regions are weighed differently because he checks the turn and he was scared of the flush, okay? If he bets the turn, that means he's not that scared of the flush, okay? But profiles bet the turn or not in these spots. 
So you have more, again, you don't have only profiles, but you have more profiles to check the turn that will follow the review. Okay, that's matching profile rules. Again, this requires like a two hours video. Um, and again, for the five, I, I like to see this type of role because um, a lot of the time when I tweet for the videos, I, I am saying, okay, this rec can fold this. And a lot of players are like, he's never folding. He's calling you everything. But uh, Rex on GG are, are playing differently, uh, I'd say. Uh, nine for should to be open against big blind. So that's a lose. Um, that's a lose open. I see a spot where it can be profitable. It's against tight Rex. That, that will be profitable as an open. I will not limp against Rex because it's super easy for Rex to like ISO 40%, even more. And if it's a wreck, I think this is way better as a limp compared to race. Um, so with that information, I fold. And if it's a tight reg, I'm fine opening it. Uh, against a big sizing here, I think orange is too strong to fold, which doesn't mean that you need to fold it. I mean, when I say it's too strong, it's, I'm not saying that theoretically you should call through call. When I say it's too strong, it's just I think the value of the call is, is higher than zero, so I'm not, I'm not gonna fold this in. Um, villain snap check the turn, and in general, in general, again, people are snap check the turns often the made in. So uh, I would have bet nine four given the, the timing he had, because six sevens think about bluffing, six eight thinks about bluffing, three deuce thinks about bluffing, um, three deuce is a pair, a jack eight thinks about bluffing, diamonds think about bluffing. So for me, he has a he has a pair. She teach nine or like he has a five. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I know <laughs> because I saw the video, but uh, I think here, given the timing, you should always bet. Um, again, we, we can do distribution in the timing uh, stuff, but I'm not going to do it too much. I mean, the video is, is eight minutes. So I, I don't know how much the recording is, is now. Yeah, yeah, queen five. I, I, I would have bet here. And also, second thing is uh, we need him to bluff the river. So he needs to be with the hands that bluff, but he needs to bluff them. And I don't think he will bluff them. So I would have bet the river here. Uh, ace four, we bet um, against two players with uh, ace four, which is fine, especially with a high VPAP in the small line. Uh, okay, so hope you enjoyed the video, and um, and uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Uh, subscribe if you like it, and, and again, um, don't judge uh, Charlie Cow only this session because he, he's he's a good player, believe me. So uh, see you next time, and uh, bye guys.